despite all this nasty snow, it's a beautiful day out here. The sun is shining, as you can see. And it is the 4th of February, 2021. Today, we install a vinyl railing at a trailer park, the same place that we coated the roof in one of the previous videos. And if I remember, when I upload this video, I'll put the link up here. Let's get to it. I'm removing the old wrought iron railing brackets which are anchored into the concrete. Now my plan here is to grind them even with the concrete surface so that I can hopefully hide them under the new posts. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is put the base trim onto the sleeve and then slide the sleeve over the steel post. This way you can align it to the porch or the steps, whatever you're working on, and it has a nice reveal around the base of it. You want to make sure the base trim piece isn't overhanging the edge of the porch or too close to the siding. Now you won't see me do it in the video, but it certainly wouldn't hurt to also place the top post cap temporarily onto the sleeve, just to ensure you're not going to hit the siding, shutters, mailboxes, or anything else that may be mounted to the side of the house. Once you do that, remove the vinyl pieces, being careful to leave the steel post in the exact same position because you're going to set your gauges to that. To make this installation relatively easy, you should have a combination square and a speed square. You want to adjust your combination square to represent the exact distance from the edge of the porch or step that you're working on to the base of the steel post. And you should use a speed square so that you can keep the post aligned square to the side of the porch. I'm going to use a cold chisel to start the hole in the center. This way when I put my bit to it, it doesn't wander and it goes right where I want it to be. Mm. I'm only going to drill one hole first mm -hmm. and I'll get the anchor put into it and then I'll pivot it on that and I'll put the other ones in after. Mm -hmm. Now then we're going to take our anchor all right don't let this intimidate you you got to make sure it's plumb in both directions you also have to make sure that it's the correct distance from the edge and that it's square to the edge as well so you got to make sure it's plumb you got to check the front with your combination square you got to check the side with your speed square and you may have to shim it to get it to to be plumb. Plumb is level up and down in case you didn't know. Can we try and drum one? Sure, you want to try? Absolutely. Start it slow. Make sure you're perfectly straight up and down, perfectly vertical with it. Start it slow so it makes a little bit of a groove. On it? Do I start on it? Yeah, right in the hole. All right, now we drill the second hole, and if I drive the anchor in, I won't be able to pivot it at all. And, and that's a good thing, but then if I drill these holes, I gotta drill them through the plate, and I don't really wanna do that. So I save these old cutoff bits. These are, these are dull bits, but they're the 3 8 size. So now I'll stick that in the hole, and it'll take the space of that. Now it won't pivot. I can chisel the next hole and drill it. 
and this lets me maintain my ability to pivot this out of the way to drill the next hole. And what we'll do is we'll put this in here. Mm -hmm. We'll put this one in there. And we'll try to get this one in. But now, when you put these in, you don't want to hammer them all the way down in yet because you want to make sure this thing is perfectly plumb. Perfectly plumb right where she sits. We'll see. Definitely need some shims. I'm thinking it's gotta go here. Look, I don't want to bore you making you watch every little single move I make. So I'm gonna tell you, plumbing this up took a little bit of work. I put a shim on the side you see there on the right. Then I tightened it down. And then I had to loosen it. Put a shim on the front side. A little tiny shim on the back side. And sometimes you just have to mess with it till you get it perfect. But if you look at that, it is plumb as plumb can be in both directions there and here take your time you'll get it can i have one through those spare bits the red ones yes This side is done. And we're going to show you how we did it when we do the other side. But that's what you can expect it to look like. All right. So your, your straight rails come all pre-packaged together. What you're going to do is you're going to set them over here. Katana's going to make sure it's plumb. And you want to make sure that the space between this post and your first baluster is the same as this post and your first baluster. So you have to keep moving it until you figure out when it's nice and even. That is an inch and three quarter. And this is two and a quarter. So it's got to go a little bit more to your left. All right, stand that baluster up. We've got two and a quarter inches, and we got one and a half, so it went too far. All right, we got two inches, and we've got one and three quarters, so it's got to go just a hair, probably an eighth of an inch. Oh, Oop, that's way much. too much. All right, try that. That's that's one and three quarter. And that's one and three quarter right there. That is perfect right where it's at. So once you know exactly where it is and it's plumb 
this way on this side once you know it's plumb once you have it so the spacing is the same and somebody's holding it so the baluster is perfectly plumb that means level up and down you're just going to come over here and you're going to mark where all your cuts are going to go all right so on these you want to cut and leave the line so i'm just going to come down here and you are going to have to trim this some more now you put these clips on here in here with the curved spot on the bottom and you want to see if it fits and if it's really tight then you need to take a blades width off this one fits smooth enough so it's a go if you want to make your life easier screw these onto the bottom of your top rail before you put it together and it'll make your life a lot easier i'm going to go do that off camera that's what it looks like on both sides. Once you get them on there, take them back off. Because the snap-on covers that, that hide these, these screws have to go through them. But if you put them on here and get the holes in first, you won't be fighting with it when you get it in position. It will follow the previously drilled holes. So put them on and take them back off. All right, so after you get that together, come over here, measure this, and pick the center. And same with this direction. Pre-drill in the bottom. the screw up through this hole, up through the bottom of this leg, and out the top, like so, and screw it into that hole. That standoff will sit this at the proper height off your porch. And I will turn this over. Try to keep them together. Mm -hmm. Here, this. I got this. This one's small enough. Alright, so. Alright, so they fit in. You're probably going to have to trim these down though, just the same, because the clips that go on here are more than likely going to be taking up more space, but we'll see. All right, now put a screw in there, please. All right, good. I have to tell you, man, I'm really excited about my daughter working with me. I have three daughters. One of them lives back in the state of Maine. Two of them live with me. This is my oldest one living with me. The other one's 17. And Katana here is such a sport, man. She is learning so much as, as we work every day together. And she's picking up skill sets that a lot of people three times her age don't have. And this really excites me because someday when I'm long gone she'll be able to take care of a lot of her in-house problems without having to hire somebody out and maybe she'll help her little sister too
See that? I drilled it, but it didn't go all the way through. Mm -hmm. What's the black? Where's the white? You got any more white screws? They're on the table. These don't need white. Yeah, they do. No, they don't. These are being covered. By what? Oh, they are. Okay. All right, good. Don't go all the way through. Yeah. Just start it. Can I have it? Yes. Put the screw in. And I'll get two in. I'll be honest with you, the screws that come with this, they give you really long screws for down here, and they don't work as they hit the steel bar in the middle. And that just snaps on there like that, and it looks... A nice finished look. So I'm going to take a slight break before I show you how to put the slanted uh, angled part of the railing on. And the reason we're going to take that break is because when I ordered this stuff online, Home Depot mailed me or shipped me the wrong railings for the stairs. So I had to return them this morning and get new railings. And they had just two in stock. And they didn't know where the second one was, but Katana found it way up high. So it took about an hour to get that rectified. And we were an hour late for the customer, which I apologized up and down to because I don't like being late. I like being a few minutes early. Then we get ready to put this second railing on and we were getting ready to show you guys how to do it. And all the components were missing. I mean, it had the top rail and the bottom rail, and it had all the balusters, but it didn't have any of the, the connection hardware. So I go back to the store and try to find it, and they don't have any. And they, there's 11 in stock of the railings. They would let me open one and take the components out, but with 11 in stock, they had no idea where it was. In fact, their computer told them that there was no spot for it, so it just could be anywhere. So then we had to go to Oxford Valley, which is another Home Depot, way out of our way, and they said, we got the component bag here. We're going to set it aside for you. They, they apparently sell them separately. We get there, it's the wrong component bag, not the right one. So make a long story short, I had to go find another stair rail kit. They had them in stock. I had to buy one of them, take the components out of it, and then return it and get my money back. And this is a shame on Home Depot. Home Depot, if you're watching this, you should be ashamed of yourself. You let people return anything with no consequences at all. And while that's great and that's wonderful, people should check these things out and make sure that the components are in there and not missing. So if you're at Home Depot and there's any package that's opened, if you find any package, I don't care if it's just cut open a slit and has a piece of tape over it or anything, I wouldn't buy it. And I would inspect every package you get from Home Depot because apparently they are unreliable. You can return anything with missing components, missing parts, and they'll sell it to the next sucker that comes along because they don't care about you. Now back to the railing. Because we got them now. After an hour again. Two hours wasted today. Unbelievable. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, make sure this shame is on me. Right there. And that is an inch, and that is a little less than an inch. So it's gonna come this way to here. Oh, I had it. Hold it right there, don't let it move. That's three quarters of an inch. Three quarters of an inch. As long as this is plumb, I can draw the lines if you don't move anything. I'm gonna move this this way. Right there. Oh. Draw the lines on here. Mm. 
and then that will fit in there like that. All right, so it's not enough to cut the top and bottom rails at the proper angles. If you don't cut the balusters at the same angle, it raises the top rail and prevents proper alignment to the porch railing. So you see how my handrail is much higher than the porch rail that we already installed to the right. I'll show you how to fix that. The best way to do it is take all the balusters out except for two, the two end ones. This way we know exactly where the two end ones are going to fit. And then we'll keep cutting those two end ones until we get this exactly right instead of cutting all of them. And then once we get that right, then we'll cut the rest of them. That makes sense? Now you can see that this angled rail is slightly higher than the one here to the right. See the difference? All you have to do is measure from the bottom of the angled rail to the bottom of the straight one and cut that much off of your balusters. But cut them on the same angle as you cut the handrail. And now that perfectly lines up with that. So that's the height we needed at. So we just cut five more of them at this height and we're good. Okay. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna sit one of these down and you're gonna put it to the high points towards you and you're gonna mark right there. And that is gonna go this way, not the same direction because then it'll be too tall. So you're gonna make, so when you cut this, and put them back together again, it should make a point like an arrow. So that's gonna go that way at that mark. And you take your next one, line it up at the back back here, make sure that they're even, make your mark right there, and it's gonna get cut that way. inside and over <laughs> so up until now we were putting this railing together and it looked like we were having an easy time but I gotta tell you Murphy's Law the world stacked against you things just not going your way call it whatever you want when you put together a railing like this you run into trouble things don't like to stay together things fall apart it's frustrating this here is your reality check because this is what it's really like now i'm not gonna keep the whole video full of all the little mishaps we had because this video would be way too long but i wanted to leave this part in to show you so when you get frustrated at putting your railing together, no, you're not alone.
that's what it takes. It's a royal pain in the butt. That's why people get paid to do this. But there it is. Pre-drill and get some screws in them.